Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So we had a brand new release from the one, the only Sistro, who created Gold Hen, obviously, and many other things. And what he said was PS5 debug is finally released. So he gives us a notification that just shows that it has been loaded, who coded it, and then obviously thanks to some of the supporters. Now, if you're wondering, Michael, what does this thing do? Well, the first thing that I believe it will be used for will be cheating in offline games. So if there is a game that you want to add infinite ammo or infinite health to, well, you would be able to do that. It could also lead to other types of mods in game. Now, another thing that it could do, or number two, would probably be account activation. So obviously on a PlayStation that has been activated, which means it thinks it connected to the PlayStation network, there's some features that's available that is currently not available if you've only had an offline account. And so the third one is typically centered around some sort of save game management, meaning that with this tool, you would be able to run save game files that weren't tied to your specific account ID. So you wouldn't have to sign them and say like the Apollo tool that we all know and love from the PlayStation 4. So if we swing over to the project page, we can see that it states right here that this is a debugger for the PlayStation 5 and that the API is mostly unchanged from PS4 Debug. Now, PS4 Debug is located just right here, and this was the code, or this is the code that we're using right now for the PlayStation 4. So the good news is, is that while they were working on this, most of this was unchanged. Now, down in this, they did state that this is still an experimental beta not everything works. Now, to go ahead and to start using this, they stated in here, download debug watch. And if you're wondering what that debug watch program is or where to get it, you would simply get it just from right here. So this is a .NET 4.71 application, so you would need to have the runtime installed in order to run it. But then you could come over here to the releases and then just grab the zip file right here. And yes, it will be stuck on 6.72, but this will obviously work just well for the PlayStation 5. Now, jumping back over to the main GitHub repo, it states that go ahead and start your favorite jailbreak exploit and then just send the ps 5 debugelf the elf's loader port 9020 start your game and then attach to the game and then start messing around with it and making leet hacks so you would want to go ahead and start by coming up here to the releases and then just scrolling down and then downloading the 7-zip right here now there is a few other things that i've noticed that has happened with this and one of them being with Lightning Mods. And Lightning Mods said, I uploaded an experimental build of ETA Hen, which includes PS5 debug. So you can go ahead and start loading this payload with ETA Hen and just kind of get all of them in one payload instead of sending individual payloads. And I did see this note over here by Chameleon, and he did say there's a pending multi trainer 2 new version release, so you can enjoy JSON, SHN, MC4 cheats, and much more. So I wanted to just kind of walk through this super fast, where at least you could see it in action. So if you do want to follow along, obviously make sure you have the PS5 debug downloaded. And then you're going to want to obviously download the zip file for debug watch. Okay, let's go ahead and let's switch over to the PlayStation 5. Okay, back over on my PS5, I just ran Spectre's exploit site page. And now I'm just going to go ahead and inject the payload. So there it is. PS5 debug is loaded. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and press the PlayStation button is I'm going to go ahead and just load up a game. So here is just a game that I have and let's just kind of get it loaded. And now we'll just kind of let that go back to the background. Let's switch to the PC. I have extracted that debug watch and now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to run it. And the very first thing that you will need to do is to put in your PS5's IP address and then press connect. Okay, and so now that it did that, you can see that I have a number of different processes that is currently running. So if we scroll back up to the top, there is the eboot.bin. So I can select that eboot.bin and then right here, I can just go ahead and attach to it. Now, you will more than likely get this security message. I am on Windows 11. You will want to just go ahead and say allow here. And if you do get this message right here, you can just go ahead and press continue. And I typically think it's a good time to just go ahead and quit out of that application and come back into it if you got that message. And now I've went ahead and pulled mine back up again. I'm going to press connect. And there is my IP. And then you can see now I've got several things that I can connect to. I'll go back to eboot.bin and now press attach. Okay, and so if it does look like this right here, or at least when I see that this box turns gray, that does mean that you're in. So obviously you can do things like come in here and start editing the process. There is a memory map that's also in here where you can search through this. There is breakpoint, watchpoint, and a memory scan that's also available in here. And then when you want to just go ahead and detach, then you can detach from the process. And then you could obviously come in here and you could pick another one. There's all kinds of good stuff in here like SCE remote play. There's USB in here and a few more other things. So hopefully this is enough to at least kind of get you up and kind of get you playing with it. Now, as far as cheats and trainers and the save states and account management and some of the other things that comes along with this, those will come out more fully baked for you to play with instead of doing some of this experimentation as your own. That's why I basically I've stated several times that for the end user, you're probably going to get a lot more out of this in regards to the game trainers and more than likely the account activation and the save states than pretty much debugging any of your PlayStation games. Anyway, I hope this information helped. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Michael, out!